Hallo und herzlich willkommen zu einer neuen Ausgabe von Klicklack. Diesmal melden wir uns aus dem kalten, verregneten Schottland. Insofern passt das Werk, das ich hier mit dem Royal National Scottish Orchestra spiele, wahnsinnig gut dazu. Es ist das mystische Werk des finnischen Komponisten Kalevi Aho mit dem Titel Siedi. Und es ist ganz großartig, dass ich das mit einer Dirigentin machen darf, die bereits zu den jungen Superstars gehört. Es ist Elim Chan. Geboren in Hongkong, studiert hat sie in Amerika, leben tut sie in Amsterdam. Und sie ist bereits ein Superstar. Sie dirigiert die besten Orchester der Welt bereits. Dazu dann später mehr, da stellen wir sie Ihnen ganz genau vor. Aber beginnen wollen wir unsere Sendung mit einem israelischen Jazzpianisten. Es ist Shai Maestro. Im Moment habe ich noch gedacht, Maestro, ob das wirklich sein echter Name ist. Ich meine, das ist total cool. Jeder möchte so einen Nachnamen haben, wenn man Künstler ist. Aber ob er wirklich so auf die Welt gekommen ist, ich habe da meine Zweifel. Aber wie auch immer. Der Mann ist einfach ein genialer Jazzpianist und aufgenommen hat er jetzt eine neue CD bei ECM Records. Das ist das Label von Keith Jarrett und wie es aussieht, haben die in diesem Genre einfach die Besten. Also Vorhang auf für Scheimeister. Jazz allows you to be you. I love classical music. If I'm, you know, I have to, I have to play a Bach piece. I, I, I that's Bach is my Bible. Huh? It's not, but there is room for me to be me. But it's more like it's within the written notes. Jazz is like, man, come in, bring your, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm the Israeli from from this village. My parents educated me in this kind of way. We grew up in the shadow of the conflict with the Palestinians. I moved to New York. I, my, I have three sisters. I blah blah blah. I ate this for breakfast. You know, jazz says, jazz says what jazz says is like, hey, come on in. this dilemma of w w which road am I going to take? Am I going to go classical to classical music or, or jazz? My mother told me, Shai, you just look way happier <laughs> when you play jazz. And, and she, she's right. I get stressed. I get stressed. If I, if I can't, I wouldn't be able to be an actor. And I, I admire actors. They, when, but they, if they have a script and you have to kind of be sad now, I can't do that. I can't, it's not, it's not me, I need to be me right now. My first encounter with the piano was improvisation at home. <clears throat> so I, I was at five, when I was five years old, I used to sit and, and, and imitate the sounds of the forest on the piano. So these were, that's where the, the wind, I didn't know what I was doing. I was just, and these were the animals running and then was the thunder. So it's always, it was always imagination and kind of cinematic in a way. And um, then when I started playing classical music, so I got into set compositions and set, you know, structures and everything. And I improvised also with, with classical music. My teacher did not like this, but... And then when I play my own music, what I try to do is 
first to compose in a very, like to have the strongest vision I possibly can, and then to throw my vision to the garbage and to put a big question mark on every single note at every single moment. You hear the kitchen? You hear that, that noise? So I, if I'm on stage, I close my eyes. And just start communicating with that that's around me. Space. Space for me to... Start with a note, just one note, and then with another note, and all of a sudden there's a color, and then I add the third one. This is this is like a transparent interval. It's not a major or not minor. It's just just air. <clears throat> and once I added this one, I was in this world, and then from there. The purpose is not to be. Let's go to the Cora. Compositions are like mini universes, are like mini stars, I don't know. They have like their own rules of gravity. There's one song that I, I wrote recently. We played it yesterday. That's the melody, right? But I start and all of a sudden I'm like, wow, let me stop and listen. And then I repeat it. And then, I, oh, I can just develop this. And now I'm improvising already, I'm, I'm somewhere else. And then I, let me bring the melody, but with a different. And then she develop to do 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 that, to do 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 that, to do 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 that. So it's all suggestions in a way. It's not, it's not, a, it's not an obligation.
Drei Stücke auf dieser CD sind sogenannte Fingerübungen für die Nichtmusiker. Das sind Nummern, die man einfach so nebenbei ein bisschen spielt und einfach ein bisschen aus Spaß hat im Studio da losgelegt und wusste anscheinend nicht mal, dass das Mikro eingeschaltet war. Jedenfalls hat das so viel Spaß gemacht und so gut geklungen, dass sie das gleich mit auf die CD genommen haben. Ehrlicherweise, ich bin Musiker, ob wahr oder nicht, das ist uns eigentlich egal. Es ist einfach eine schöne Geschichte und deswegen erzählen wir die hier bei Klick So, jetzt sind wir hier, Edinburgh, Usher Hall, in ein paar Stunden geht's los, das Orchester, und das werden Sie vielleicht hören, das baut im Hintergrund schon ein bisschen auf. Und ich habe die große Freude, mit einer meiner absoluten Lieblingsdirigentinnen hier zusammenzusitzen, mit der großartigen Elim Chan. Elim, thanks so much for your time. Oh, thank you. So, we are here, we're performing Kale Viajos Percussion Concerto tonight. We had a quite long rehearsal yesterday, mm -hmm. doing the whole very complicated piece in just one big, long rehearsal. Mm -hmm. So how do you feel? Very intense, very intense, but very fulfilling. I think to you know go from in the morning at 10 o'clock, everyone has this phase being a bit worried, scared, mm. to at the end of the day, many of them apparently like the piece very much. They said they were, you know, they were they worked hard and they leave feeling, yes, we have worked hard and you know, and they've got to learn a great piece of music. immediately can feel your energy you had yesterday. I was really admiring you because, you know, we started at 10 and you were working really hard with such an intensity and energy, really being focused on the details and the some very small details. Mm -hmm. And after six hours, you were still in fantastic shape. You know, in the rehearsal, yes, the work was so intense, but then when you see the improvement, when you see their eyes getting like, now I understand, and then they go back again and then they do better, and then you get energy from that. So it's like a cycle, you know, like recycling of energy. You give and then you, you get it back from them and then you give more. And so it's like a circle. In the end, at 4.30, you asked me if I was tired. Actually, not really. This is a complicated work. Mm -hmm. Musicians have to uh, work very hard. You know, sometimes you or the soloist told them this is not right, maybe it's too loud or it's not rhythmic or something like that. Mm -hmm. But at the end, they really like you. Talking about me uh, as a conductor, I'm still baby stage. So I'm still figuring this out. But I think one thing I, I think is very important is that because I'm very young and many things I'm doing my first time, and actually the musicians, they, they, are, they are expert on their instrument. So I come in, I think that respect is very important. Mm -hmm. to, to trust that they, they know what they need to do. Mm -hmm. And I actually, as a conductor, should just should facilitate and allow, give that space for them so that they deliver the best. I always remember we're in the end working with 100 human beings. Mm -hmm. We all will get tired. We all want at, one, at some point, please, I just want to go have a tea and have some fresh air. And I know that, Yes, but and at the same time, you also know that, you know what, just stay with me for two more minutes and let's fix this. And then you know that that will jump over the hurdle.
started uh, being a conductor in the in the U.S. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, ten years ago. Sort of, yes, I would say that. Because at first you wanted to be a doctor, right? Yes, doctor, but m more specifically, I want to be more like um, to work with the criminals, like in the crime scene. So I want to be the, the at first I thought I wanted to be a coroner. You know, you can cut open, open the dead bodies and then ah. find the secret and then solve the crime. CSI, Elim Chan. Yes, exactly. Too much of that. CSI, um, you know, Church Sherlock Bond. Holmes. Shell Sherlock Holmes, a lot of that. X-Files, like Maybe, those are the you know, they're just discussing if the next Bond should be a, a, a girl. That would be so cool. Maybe I could be, could be Bond boy. Don't you think so? But you work with criminals. Yes, it's, it's the right. same. It's pretty much it's the same profession. Yes, yeah, partner in crime. But I mean, you 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 made of you played the cello, you played the piano, you sang in the choir, right? Mhm. Mm so you had a quite strong relation being a musician, right? Yes. But why being a, a doctor or a coroner or whatever it is? Well, it's like. Is it because of your family? Mm. Did they say? As many family members do, you have to learn something which is yeah. respected instead of doing musician stuff. Sure, really? especially in, you know, I grew up in Hong Kong, so there definitely is this sort of invisible pressure mm -hmm. from the society or from, you know, just the, the, the parents. You know, I, I remember many of my classmates when I was young, everyone, there are only three sort of occupations you can do in let Hong me, Kong. Let me guess. Yeah. Lawyer. Yes. Definitely. Doctor. Yes. Um, being member of the state or government in any way, right? Sure, but what business? Hong Kong ah, business, is like of course, yes. money. Yeah. So, so. If you're, you're those three, then you're all set for your life. Musicians are not so, re oh, or artists are not so respected. You say that, everyone is like, that's hobby. Oh, no, don't think, don't think about that. I also love the whole idea of finding out something by doing investigation, experiments, and then you can you know, uncover some surprises or truth, you know, and, and I think this spirit comes into the conducting uh, job. As a conductor, you open a score, you have to analyze, and, you know, and then you find out yeah, right. what the you know, composer wants, or like, and it's still then you go to the orchestra and you do experiments. happened that you finally said, I will do the conducting thing. Who was it? Verdi. Barack Obama. Verdi. Michelle Obama. Verdi. Verdi. Oh, I thought Barack Obama. You know, I was singing in the choir, even though I was not studying music, because I love singing, so. And we were doing the Requiem Mass. Mm -hmm. And my teacher, he had to go outside the hall and listen to the balance. So you came in? Yes. So he said, Elim, can you come to the stage and conduct the Dies Irae? That's with you know, the so loud, you know Dies Irae, with, with the bass drum and the, all the hell, hell opens up. Yeah, the hell opens and up. And see, he wants to go outside to see if he can still hear everything with the trumpets, you know, boom, 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 and to, you know. So that moment, you know, I was like, oh, wow, okay, well, uh, sure. I, I've always sort of, you know, prepared and, uh, okay, fine. And I, I remember talking to the, to the, to the drums, I said, if this is hell opening up, like the, this the image of hell, they don't sound like what you just did. You, you said? Yes, because I was a percussionist? Yes, I said, you know, need balls, right wow. at the... Yeah, but you know the conductor was out there. But the, you just took the... I just, I, I just thought that was not good. Yeah, it was not, that's not the right sound. And then, and then we, we went for it. What did the percussionist say to you? It was great. So he did immediately what you well, was, was asking. Oh, okay. Very good. And, and that was that moment, you know, I felt, okay, 
choir. I, I had I had experience, you know, conducting choir, mm -hmm. and I love it too. But then suddenly, when the marriage of an orchestra and the choir, mm -hmm. especially the orchestra, and then there's so many things you can do: the drums and the trumpets, mm -hmm. and the that just changed. I remember that feeling. I was on the podium, and that there's like a, a like a confirmation of something, like a hammer, boom, you know? Yeah. It, you, this is what you have to do. had this sort of battle the night before a big debut, mm -hmm. stepping in front of a very big, famous, you know, respected orchestra. I always, you know, couldn't sleep because a part of me is like, you have to impress them. You have to be the conductor. Um, and show them this, you know, show them what you know and, and prepare all the questions and answers, like, you know, get ready. Mm -hmm. And then another part of me is like, don't do that. It's like resisting that and, and just, even actually more open to the idea of surprise. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think always in the end, in the morning, the other softer voice wins. And that's usually what happens. Mm -hmm. Actually, that gives me the calmness to, you know, because then I don't go on stage already feeling my whole shoulder, I need to buff up, I'm the, mm, mm, mm. I have to go and, mm, you know. And I just sort of like everything become, Okay, I'm going to bear, I'm getting to know them. Mm -hmm. And often I find this makes the whole experience so beautiful because I realize that they're actually, you know, like, because usually I also think, oh, this orchestra that comes talk about orchestra, they're like God. And I have to, you know, bow down to them. London Symphony, oh. And then, but then once I, I go in with that, not without this attitude, but just I'm here to, to you know, get to know you and you get to know me, so I'm just going to be me. I know I don't know everything, and it's okay. So let's, let's see how, how it goes. And I think that just oh, opens up everything, and I find them, they're normal people. They're nice, <laughs> <laughs> they're very nice, and, and, and they're willing to help. In the end, everyone wants to, most of the time, just wants to make the music better. And mm -hmm. once you agree on that and meet each other there, Oh, yeah, then, then, it, then it's no problem. Yeah, she has a wonderful air of um, communication and she trusts the musicians in front of her, which is a really nice thing. There's, there's a, a relationship where we work together. Um, so it's very nice to have that sometimes, you know, where you can feel that your um, input is as important as her input. And yeah, so we, we make very good music together as a result. The second part of the concert shows the college number 10. And we were just wondering, you know, in the Click Clack team, I mean, you are such a sunshine and you are, you know, you express your joy for music. Shostakovich, it's ironic, it's sometimes dark, it's sometimes raw. I think in the 10th symphony, what really fascinates me and, the, and the, in, in some way a joy, but that I would interpret it is that because, you know, you saw his name, this boom, 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 is, is built in. Huh? And then you at first hear it a little bit timid version of it. One, one instrument there, here, the flute play it sometimes. And it's timid, but then over the, the course of the symphony, it gets louder and louder, as if Shostakovich becomes more confident, because now that Stalin is gone, he can come back as himself, as an individual, to, uh, I'm here. Mm -hmm. And at the end, the finale, it's just so much joy. It's almost like, to. Like, yes, the darkness was there, and in the end, the whole orchestra, dun, 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 it's like, and, you know, as, a, as an artist, now thinking about it, I have to smile at the end, because it's, it's, you can see such a victory, such a triumph, mm -hmm. 
um, that you know I could see also Shostakovich himself probably smiled when he finished. It's like this is it. Edim, thank you so much. Looking so much forward to our concert tonight. Same. Thanks for your time and thanks for being at Click Yak. Thank thanks. you. Das war es leider schon wieder und irgendwie ist es schade. Wir haben die 30 Minuten klick klack, die gehen so schnell vorüber. Aber wir haben da eine gute Nachricht. In einer Woche, in einer Woche kommt schon Sol Capeta mit einer neuen Ausgabe von klick klack und diesmal meldet sie sich aus Berlin. Wir haben sie dort begleitet. Sie hat den Opus Award bekommen. Sie ist eine der größten Klassikkünstlerinnen und sie hat es echt verdient. Und wir mit klick klack, wir waren natürlich mit dabei und senden ein kleines Feature. Drei Wochen bin ich wieder da, nämlich mit einer Sendung aus Wien, aus der Hofburg, aus dem innersten Machtkreis der Republik Österreich vom Bundespräsidenten. Der Bundespräsident kommt zu Klick. Wir werden ihn exklusiv interviewen, nicht zur Politik, sondern zur Musik. Ich darf für den Bundespräsidenten ein bisschen musizieren. Die Bürger kommen ins Haus und sie werden sehen, vermutlich haben wir einfach den geilsten Bundespräsidenten in ganz Europa. Und darauf sind wir auch ein bisschen stolz. Also ich hoffe, Sie sind dann mit dabei. Liebe Grüße aus Edinburgh, Ihr Martin Grubinger. <lacht>